Okay. So uh, I can say that probably the most important part of uh, any model that works on wellness and health has to incorporate this aspect into things. And simple things like this that you can teach people are very, very powerful. Um, the idea that she was talking about in relaxing the gaze, you know, the where I've used it is in seeing a patient where we've been having some, say a patient is very upset about something and you're sitting there and you're very focused on what the patient is saying. And what happens is that because we focus, we're unable to see the broader picture. And sometimes by just sitting ourselves back a little bit and becoming broader in our gaze, we see things in a very different way. And the patient's input is taken in the scheme of the entire picture, and it doesn't create as much tension. So that's not a common thing, but all of us have either a patient or some situation to deal with that can be stressful. And sometimes just bringing ourselves back from it and looking at a much wider picture I found that to be extremely helpful. It's not that easy to, to practice that, but once you try it a couple of times, just try it the next time you're in a situation that's stressful. Try to bring your awareness to a much wider range and decrease your focus on the thing in front of you and you will see what happens. Um, okay, so let's go to the case of the CEO uh, here in Orlando who came in, um, okay, uh, age 36, not working for about two years, diagnosed with fibromyalgia, uh, had been to many clinics around the country and, you know, basically carried this diagnosis. She had a history of exposure to volatile organic compounds. She was seen in Mayo Clinic and, and various places around the country with severe fatigue. Her energy level was one to two out of 10. She had severe pain all over, um, nine, out of, nine to 10 uh, out of 10. Not sleeping, anxiety and panic attacks, memory loss, cognitive dysfunction, and acid reflux. And acid reflux becomes a really important thing, again, when we go back to talking about the, the issue of absorption. Uh, but she was on the medical standard, which included that she was on disability from the diagnosis and severe pain. She was on some prednisone as needed, Lunesta, Xanax, and Nexium. So now most of us in this audience know what we would do with her, more or less. We have an idea that we're going to get her off of these things. And she's... Uh, again told how her symptoms and fibromyalgia are caused by imbalances in each of the five areas and you know when I look at a diagnosis like fibromyalgia it's a pain and fatigue of unknown origin unknown origin just means unknown to us uh, I would again say that that is going to be exactly the unknowns that lie in the different areas here um, so Considering her symptoms, even before taking any labs, she was placed at her age 36. She probably should have been started on 6.25 milligrams of progesterone, according to what I taught earlier this morning. But as you can see, I started her on 25 because this patient we knew would need more because she's headed towards an adrenal stress type and fibromyalgia type syndrome, so she was given more. Um, multivitamin... Uh, mineral B12 and folate, IM weekly, as we talked about, the enzymes we talked about, the probiotics we talked about, and far infrared, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about, which is a far end of the spectrum, which can be utilized in people who cannot exercise to improve blood flow and far infrared wavelengths between 5 and uh, 56 nanometers do um, help in cellular repair. Uh, she was also taught breathing exercise and recommended that she do yoga. Um, but when you recommend yoga to people, it becomes a major obstacle because they have to go find a yoga class and learn yoga. And even though it's a very beneficial thing, the follow through is very low. But you teach them a couple of breathing exercises and have them follow up with someone in your office who's following and teaching them the breathing exercises. And within a little while, it's incorporated into their daily life because it's not that hard. And when you see the benefit, and I can tell you that if you do the exercise that Margaret just taught you, even if you take three minutes out of your day to do that exercise, you will see and visibly feel the effects of that. Um, so 
That's called stressing something too much, but it, it actually is that important. Um, but far infrared enhances the cellular repair and increases the toxic content of sweat from 5 to 15 percent. It increases blood flow pretty much throughout. So when the patients can't exercise, like severe fibromyalgia, severe rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, even somebody who's sick and needs an immune boost, we stick them into that chamber. And we actually have a, 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 a unit uh, that works like a sauna. There's many different types of far infrared things that you can use. Um, but at week three, she comes back on the regimen that we put her on. And now her energy level slightly better. It's a three out of 10. She was a one to two. Her pain is slightly better. The main thing is that she's sleeping better and she's not having any anxiety attacks. Um, and on the enzyme and probiotics, her acid reflux has actually decreased. So, um, but she's still on the Nexium. And um, her labs come back at day 21 with a progesterone of 0 0.7. We're looking to five to 10. DHEA of 10, free T3 at 178, very, very low. Even the laboratory marked this one off. TSH of 7.0, and she's not being treated for this yet. Um, and a cortisol of 5. So she's also reporting a adrenal fatigue at this point. And that's what you usually see when people are sick for a long time. It's the tiger on the chest. Long enough, and what didn't start off as adrenal fatigue ends up as adrenal fatigue. Um, so she actually ended up on the progesterone 75, um, thyroid uh, 38, DHEA, uh, because her DHEA was so low. And again, this is the second case we've seen this pattern of DHEA and cortisol, DHEA low and cortisol low in an adrenal uh, pattern. Uh, she was started on some pregnenolone because of memory and concentration issues and melatonin. And again, this has to be the kind of patient who's Ill willing and able and interested in swallowing a bunch of different pills. Um, so uh, she's also, her nutritional result that we had seen that I had shown you before, low B vitamins across the board and antioxidant function in the 23rd percentile. So she started on an extremely strong regimen, um, omega-3s at three to four grams. And the Harvard studies um, are showing, if you saw the st study published two years ago, 2.5 grams of EPA DHA for maintenance, um, for ba basic maintenance, and then three to four grams for anybody with cardiac diabetes, five grams, neurological, seven grams. So that's actually from their studies. They're recommending those kind of doses. Again, if you're using an enteric coded form, um, you, you don't need to, to worry about that one. Um, I mean, you, you can actually lower the dose. And the antioxidants, the strongest antioxidant that I haven't listed here is the breath. So breathing, again, is critical, but these are things that they can actually take, uh, green foods from the ocean, spirulina, chlorella, kelp, dust, bee pollen. Uh, these are available in formulas. Goji, noni, mangosteen, acai. This is just temporary antioxidant boost. When you see somebody in the 23rd percentile, you load them in the beginning because you're trying to get them better quick. You get them better quick, and then you can take everything off, and especially if they're willing to swallow all those things. Um, her MAP, which was the metabolic analysis profile, showed a significant ATP production defect and a yeast overgrowth. Um, so she was started on the cardiac regimen, and Dr. Steven Sinatra is actually here in this conference this, uh, this uh, time, and I haven't looked at the schedule, but if he lectures, I would definitely go and see what that lecture is about. 